Ciao, sono Raul and two weeks ago I had the opportunity to play Sonic Forces demo against Week. So, is it going to be any good? Well yeah, it's not terrible. But let's see what works and what doesn't. The first stage I played was Modern Sonic Sunset Heights. You all know how it is. The whole city is on fire, there's 3D, there's 2D, and the level is linear and short as well. Not strange for what could be an introductory stage. But what really caught my attention, to the point of making me replay the level 4 times, is the gameplay. Sonic is different, he's slower than he was in generations, he accelerates faster than he used to, and he actually maintains some control over his direction while running. Which is probably the reason you can't drift anymore. These factors make Sonic, when you're not boosting, feel more like a fast platformer than a racing game, which will hopefully translate into less empty wastelands and more complex level design. Now, since we are talking about modern Sonic, let's talk about the sweet sweet boost mechanic. Unlike Generation and Unleashed, it doesn't look like the boost is taken for granted, so, like in Colors, you start the level with an empty boost bar that can only be filled by collecting wisps or destroying robots. Furthermore, it works out pretty quickly. So, for the first time, beside colors, I didn't just hold the boost button for the whole stage, but instead, I had to carefully choose the right moment to take advantage of the chance to go faster, like at the beginning of a corridor or right before a bunch of enemies. Speaking of which, the boost felt like the one from Generations, which, given the lower speed of Sonic, felt overpowered. In addition, because of Sonic's higher sensitivity, as you can see here, on my first runs I often went off the path while boosting. I'd say it's a great thing if compared with Generation's excessive stiffness, although I'm afraid it won't change much in the actual gameplay. You mostly run your narrow path, and many sections are automated in a way that little control is left over Sonic. For example, quick step sections are scripted in a way you completely lose the ability to turn, so the joystick becomes responsible of quick stepping. I really don't understand. Why would you need to be able to use both the joystick and triggers to quickstep? Not only is it redundant, it even makes the game feel more limited than it should be. I can totally understand things like the camera going along a specific path, narrow corridors and even automated loops, but removing the ability to turn in some sections is just bad game design. Now, let's talk about the 2D part. Like pretty much everyone in the Sonic community, I'm not a fan of those slow performing sections in recent games. Nonetheless, I have to admit I had some fun with this one. Maybe it's because of the better jump and overall snappier controls, or maybe because of the better level design that encourages speed, but I sure did find it more enjoyable than those sections from Generations or Colors. I mean, not that it was that hard to beat Colors slow and precise performing. Anyway, it's not like everything is perfect. For instance, I don't like the double jump that much. It's like the one from Colors but less floaty. It's not terrible, but honestly, I don't understand why didn't they just copy the one from Lost World. That was probably the only thing that game got right. This way feels once again like a cheap way to make precise platforming easier. Another issue I had with this level was the excess of automation. For some reasons, this one turning is semi-automated, and then there's a loop, this part, and way too many dash panels and springs. I get it, it looks cool, but it takes too much time compared to the shortness of the stage. Next up is Classic Sonic Stage. Unfortunately, all I could play was the boss battle against the Hector Dragoon. Nonetheless, that was enough to notice Classic Sonic is not as stiff as it was in Generations. We are definitely not talking about classic games feel, but it's still a step forward compared to Generations and Sonic 4. Back to the boss battle. I honestly had way more fun than I anticipated. For instance, it wasn't as stupidly easy as I expected, especially if you had already collected all the rings at once, since you can't pick them up after being hit. Speaking of which, you can't recollect rings in any of the four playstyles. The idea behind this, that is to make the game more challenging, is great, but the execution, in my opinion, is a little drastic. Maybe I would have rather preferred to see it take two hits to reach zero rings, like it was in Generations and Unleashed but I think that's something I'll just get used to, especially given that most of platformers have that two-hit death mechanic too. One thing is sure, this is probably a better way of making a game challenging than just stuffing trial and error sections or bottom left pits. Anyway, back to classic Sonic. As you will have guessed, I think playing with him is going to be way better than in Generations. 
no overpower spin dash, there's many as drop dash and, despite the overall lack of momentum based gameplay, Casino Forest looks really nice. Also, it's been a long time I've last heard a track made with Genesis Saints that actually sounded good. More about it later, because now we are getting to the brand new and juicy part, that means Avatar stage. Except the IGOC you just created controls like Modern Sonic. The stage layout is the same of Modern Sonics, and the boost is replaced with a Wispon. Basically a Wisp gun that all it does is compensate the lack of Modern Sonic's boost. So instead of boosting through an order of enemies, you'll just burn or electric whip them. The bottom line is, it's pretty good. At least for a fan of action platformers of the likes of me. Although I'm afraid that the shooting may get stale after a while, but given there are 4 different playstyles and several respawns, this issue might not even come up. And finally the tag team stage. So the first section is linearity at its finest. It's just spectacle and a couple of jumps, there's no difficulty at all and you can basically only run forward, the real challenge is managing to die. So yeah, as I had already seen this stage a couple of times, this one section was pretty boring to play. On a side note, I find the enemy placement somewhat funny. What are all those robots doing here? You can't even avoid destroying them. Sonic and the Avatar pretty much automatically speed through. So, after a reckless run up into the pyramid, starts the long and waiting 3D section that isn't just a line. This part has a clever level design that is in a way reminiscent of how classic stages are structured. You can either effectively use the power of the, in this case, Burst Wisp and skip most of the level flying across the stage like a pro, or go on the lower and slower route, that means jumping from one gear to another and use the Wisp to destroy the robots. Guess what? I didn't effectively use the power of the Burst Wisp, so I had to do all the slow performing. The only problem with it is that I couldn't get used to the odd way Sonic accelerates. So my first couple of runs were, well, losing control of Sonic and basically committing suicide by falling off the gears. And then I didn't understand how to flame throw, so I spent about 4 lives trying to take off robots one at a time with the Omega attack. You can easily imagine it goes boring pretty fast. And I actually tried to avoid that with a couple of jump and a short blast to the next gear. But as I mentioned before, the boost is OP as hell. In the end, all I really did was teleport me once again to the nearest death spot. To explain it better, do you remember the first time trying to do fast that performing section in Sky Sanctuary? Here, that's exactly how it felt like. Anyway, I'm pretty sure this middle section is actually great, and I guess it's going to be a lot of fun to master. It's a shame this stage doesn't last long and that a good chunk of it, namely the beginning and the ending, is pretty much made of a straight line. So, what can I say after all this rumbling? The game is not bad, it's definitely going to be a lot of fun, but I don't think it's going to reach the high standards that generation set. I mean, controls and movements are great, if not even slightly better. There's more variety in terms of gameplay and it looks like story and longevity are going to be great too. Basically it's better in every technical way, but the gameplay. As far as I've seen these last weeks, the level design doesn't look that much great. It lacks of openness and alternate routes that made generations stand out. In Forces, nearly all the 3D sections I've seen so far are narrow corridors without any branch, truly a severe step back. Heck, even Unleashed, a nearly 10 years old game, had more open levels. All in all, I still believe this game is going to get great scores from the critics. It's basically the critically acclaimed colors, but more refined, varied and better in every field. And that's probably the most important thing for a struggling series like Sonic. But I'm pretty sure Arkham fans will continue to prefer Unleashed, Generation or Adventure 2 over this one. One last thing, have you heard the songs they put on Sonic's official channel? They're amazing, I mean, listen! Who cares about this gameplay and such when you have this quality of music? To be honest, that's exactly why I became a Sonic fan in the first place. 
So yeah, expect even more remix of Sonic Forces from me. In fact, what you're listening right now is my upcoming remix of Kaizen of Forest. And with this I salute you. Bye.